Hello, something guys and gals. This is something guy nine one two yet again, and this is poem number five out of five. And this one was a poem that I made for my poetry class, which I enjoyed a lot. It was merely the experiences I had reading other people's poems, particularly two that had a lot of noticeable flaws. Like a lot of one had way too many metaphors, and the other one was just too simplistic and almost made it sound as though the person seemed demented. So this was a combination of the two uh, weird cliches. One involving happiness and one involving sandpaper which resulted in my poem being called The Happy Sandpaper. Another challenge I also had with this poem was that I had to make it under the grounds of the technical, the, the technical things uh, with it. I had to actually make a narrative out of it as well. So this was a pretty cleverly well done poem. Everyone really liked it. They liked the they liked how s satirical it was and you know how it opened the eyes to you know what poets are always expected to do and whatnot. And you know I, I, I went through a phase where I was attacking what apparently was traditional poetry and not poetry that I just like to like to write. And overall, I think the pro I think the thing that I always seemed to miss out of my poetry was a certain narrative. I just kind of came out with a conceptual message, but never made like uh, made a clear, definite uh, a clear, definite uh, portrayal of the subject matter. I, ne I never like set up the scene and whatnot, and how that is revolu. Uh, I kind of made the subject matter and the the concepts and the uh, metaphors and the morals more important than everything else involving characters and plot and narrative. So this is a happy sandpaper, uh, slightly revised from the original, but um, like you would care because this is the only rehearsal I'm going to make of it. So let's start. Sandpaper laughed into my ear, drilling holes through my eardrums as it happily shrieked, Write me more metaphors! I happily obliged, despite the pain, scribbling words of utter hysteria to the rhythm of nails scratching a chalkboard. Isn't it so great to be subtle? He chortled. His screams of delight made my brain cells want to commit suicide one by one. At this point, I didn't hear him anymore, so I nodded in autonomous agreement, hopefully that in doing so would make him stop. And then everybody lived happily ever after. And all poetry in its complex vein made absolute sense to everyone, and I was a great writer, and I was never wrong, and I was happy, and so was Sandpaper. Somebody came, to came towards me with the concerned sympathy of a creative writing teacher, asking, what are you trying to get at? I couldn't answer, my shoulder hunched by the weight of the sandpaper, scraping against my ears like obsidian textured floss over teeth. What are you trying to get at? yelled the teacher, impatient with my response of utter silence, the tinnitus forcing me to ring out. At this point, I didn't want to hear it, so I ran away from all the terrible noises, pulled into my own delirious love for myself, shared by the sandpaper. And then everybody lived happily ever after, and all the poetry I ever made was never disliked by no one. And I was a great writer, and I was never wrong, and I was happy, and so was sandpaper. And then everybody had left me alone, and all the fantasies I ever made truly became real. I was a great writer. I was never wrong. I was happy. So did Sandpaper. And so I did. Yep. <laughs> a whole bunch of cleverness all just stacked in one. I have a knack for that. I think, you know, the poetry class wasn't bad. I think I got to, you know, enjoy what I like to do, enjoy the talents I have. I have, like, the teacher, like, liked my noticeable, like, charismatic and kinetic energy in this poem. I can make them move, I can make them intense and exciting. Because I don't like poetry that's just boring and monotonous. And I guess as a consequence, I forgot that poetry require a certain narrative structure to be poetries in their own 
and I was always worried that like at one point I would just make po poetry with narrated structures but have no sort of like moral moral like moral lesson overall but I don't know apparently from the teacher's standpoint that in the process of making the narrative I have made the moral structure it's just it's a lot harder for me to see it's not as obvious and you know it was always difficult for me to decide if I wanted to make you know the, the metaphors and the, the contents as subtle as possible or just make them so obvious and like blatant, blatant and blunt that you could not possibly miss the point like if I was to talk about a, a poetry about prostitution you probably notice the the message behind that you would see that probably within the first paragraph of the poem or the first stanza so anyway that's all of them that's all of them all five po poems I know it's been a pretty hectic schedule I know that I don't have a lot of people watching these and I'm not particularly on a demand at the moment for making more of these but I, I, I just have the personal incentive I have the personal imperative to make these not it, it, no one's been like ringing this down my throat it's like hey get more poem rehearsals it's just been me telling myself I need to make more poem rehearsals and I've done so pretty good job so far so anyway I hope you enjoyed these these nice streaks of uh, poem rehearsals and I hope to bring more to you at a more recent date rather than just next year or four months away or whatnot so anyway uh, toodaloo